on board, uh, any kinds of other equipment. Those things become very useful, and we can take those isolated sounds and isolate them and put them on separate tracks and, and build up, you know, what would sound realistic um, in the end to the audience. Um, and, uh, and as I said, crew comments and this sort of thing. You can also use the tape as kind of a diary. Because the tapes are inexpensive, it's not like shooting the IMAX film where, you know, so many dollars per second of film, and you have to, you know, use it very wisely. Uh, I believe you're taking a dozen cassettes with you, which is something like 12 hours of sound, which is a lot of material. So I wouldn't be concerned with all the things you have on your mind to try to set up a shot and get the can you know, the sound just ready and then have somebody start this and run that. That's going to be just too much to, to worry about. Uh, with these cassettes, um, you can set this up and maybe even record a rehearsal for a shot when the camera's not running because you can get then some of the sound uh, without the camera horror going and we can maybe cheat that sound later. That's what From a quality standpoint, how good a quality <coughs> does that tape have to be before it's useful to you? Well, this and is a... Kind of a uh, well, we, uh, this machine, this is a commercially available cassette recorder. Right. And uh, it's, its operation is, is very simple. It's similar if you have a cassette at home or in your hi-fi system. <laughs> it's very similar to it. It is a, it is a very high-quality cassette recorder. It's about as, as good as you're going to get. And certainly within this size package and simplicity of operation, uh, you're not going to do better. And, and we've recorded lots of material on a machine like this in the studio to use in regular films. Sure. So it can be very good. And, and the, the, that is the frequency response that this machine will pick up with these microphones. It's full range, OK? <coughs> and uh, it, 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 it's, it's not just a documentation device in the sense of getting a record like a log tape would be. Uh, this actually can make recordings which can be aesthetically usable. We'll talk about um, putting voice information on the tapes a little later, because once again, it can be used as a diary. When you put a tape in, you can say the time, and you can identify the situation, you can talk all you want. You'll find that most sound men end up talking to themselves a lot of the time, partly because they're driven insane in their work, and partly because it's a, it's a, uh, a good way to you know, keep a diary. Sure. Often you go out and record, and you'll say, well, I'll remember later what I just did or what, where I was, but you won't. And, and weeks later, you'll pour through your tapes and you, and you just hope that along there, there's, there's IDs and times and any, you know, any information you want. Any home unit that you might encounter. You can see once you run the tape, and I'll just put it in play, you can see that the wheels are turning. Uh, they Fortunately, they've prevented the ability to pause on this machine. Uh, do you want this recording to be Dolby or non-Dolby, which is this electronic way of encoding the information on the track? The answer is yes, and so we can always keep it in the Dolby position. <coughs> if you accidentally had it in the non-Dolby Dolby position, it wouldn't, wouldn't destroy your recording. It wouldn't be quite as high a quality than the recording. This, this switch here is depends on the type of cassette you buy. Just like film stocks, you can have cassettes with a different sensitivity. Option down here is a, a pad, really. If you were going to record something amazingly loud, a, a rock concert up close, or a you know, diesel engine by, something enormously loud, this is essentially switches a, um, a set of resistors into the microphones that desensitizes them a great deal. Um, you wouldn't, shouldn't have to worry about this. You won't be recording anything that will require that type of um, precaution. If I was able to give full attention to the sound unit, I would turn them off after a session, yes. Okay. I, I, you know, that if would we be... don't, don't worry about it. If, if we you, forget if you, and remember the next day, don't worry about it. The thing is you're going to have to pull yeah. the thing apart and change the, some batteries. Yeah, my instruction would be to turn it off. What I'm saying is if you forget, don't you're too busy, there's probably not going to be a serious problem. Okay. Uh, Ordinarily, when I pack the unit up at the end of a session, I turn everything off and put it in the case, and a week later, I pull it out, and I know it's all fresh. But um, yes, you should turn it off. Um, once again, there's two microphones because there's two separate input channels. And more or less, the way we've used this recorder on the flight is not to make a stereo recording in the sense of you know, two microphones up close, one left ear and one right ear, but rather separating the two such that they both can get 
a perspective on different items, you know, if, and, and, and using this rather as a two-channel recorder rather than trying to just get a, a single a, a stereo image. You could have one mic down on the mid-deck ceiling and one up above in the flight deck, depending on what you were doing. Okay. So the, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, placing microphones later, but think of it as two tape recorders. Um, they'll always they'll record on both channels simultaneously. You can't stop that. Every time you go into record, both, both channels record. <coughs> but uh, it, um, think in terms of how, how broad you can make your coverage of things and getting you know, interesting items. Recording, it's strictly a monitoring uh, gain control. So if you have headphones plugged in here, if you happen to take an adapter and you use your other headphones, um, you can listen to the volume here. If there are no headphones plugged in, this monitor control and controls the loudness of the speaker in playback. So the signal on here, you can just it's just the output gain control. That I have such meters on. Yes. I usually, uh, as I hear noises, I adjust it so that uh, it's kind of bouncing into the red, but it's not banging and living over right. in the red. Is that is that all exactly right? the right procedure? Yeah. What what you the only judgment you're going to make? It's said on this instruction here. What full counterclockwise? Well, that would mean that these are up. I'm sorry. This way. Fully which would mean they're assuming that what you're going to record is a lot of quiet little noises. So most of the things you're recording are, are, are dialogue and... Uh, there, there's the mic. <coughs> well, there's a mic in the shot. Oh, yeah, you're right. Let me ask a question about that. Yeah. You have what's called a limiter down here, which I yeah. assume uh, suppresses the signal when it gets too loud. It uh, puts a ceiling on things if it's too loud. So the, the green dot is on with a limiter. <laughs> yeah, they are. Is that what you want? Well... Usually in recording, I don't recommend people use the limiter, but that's in cases in which the recordist is at the gain control, and he can make a judgment as things occur. As, you know, he can see something really loud is about to happen, and, and maybe he's rehearsed it, and he knows he can crank it now down. Crank it down. Uh, with the limiter on, what will happen is he will not uh, make those judgments for you. What the limiter will do is it will, will put a ceiling on things, such that if you're recording a normal dialogue scene and then suddenly there was a big noise, somebody dropped something, a flipboard, or of course nothing could be dropped in the show. <coughs> somebody bangs a piece of equipment, slams a door, um, it would tend to suppress that noise a little bit. Everything would kind of dip down for a second and then snap back. Yes, sir. So head range. That's something you'll have to decide upon once you get up there. Yeah. If, if, for instance, dialogue is, is we use that as the basis for our judgment, <coughs> excuse me, then on a given setup, and probably once you've kind of set it up in the flight deck wherever you are, so you probably have found about the right spot, things are going to change a whole lot. Um, I'm guessing you're going to be kind of in the mid-range here, such that once in a while a loud noise will peak it, but most of the time you're safe and things are staying uh, there is a lot of meter action, but it's not hanging in the red. You're allowed to go into the red. Just don't loiter. That's fine. You we'll do that. Yeah. So I think the kind of sounds you're gonna you're gonna hit are uh, are abrupt sounds. I mean, if you, let's, 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 let's say this: the safest thing is to have the green dot on. If you have any, I'm just saying the safest thing. You may get a better recording without it. So. <coughs> um, I can't tell you two different things. You know, now that you say that, uh -huh. we could set this thing up and it's running. Yeah. And get busy for about 10 minutes and we're not even watching the meters and all of a sudden noises are louder than we thought when yeah. we were setting it up. Yeah. And we could be banging the heck out of the <coughs> regime. And so by having the limiter on, me, yeah. if, if, but that's your choice. Well, let's go with the green dot then. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. Sure, understand. Yeah, I guess. The funny thing you're talking to. Most sound men won't use a limiter. Okay. We are emotionally against. But you it. mostly watch your dial. So, but we are monitoring the machine. That's another thing. And often you have a chance to rehearse something. So, let's let's be safe and go with the green dot. Now. That, but know. if we're doing something, and we're able to monitor. It, we'll, we can do it without the limiter. Sure. Yeah. So, sure. No. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah.
this batter is if you put it, if you put it in the middle, mm -hmm. the, the sound in the preceding minute and the succeeding minute, which is the most valuable sound we can get, yeah. is well recorded. The sound during the actual running of the camera is rotten, but yeah. it will be rotten anyway. Okay. As long it wouldn't as matter camera, if it's over there. Yeah. Yeah. Any sound that happens while the camera's running, then yeah. he, he uses the sound as what we call a guide track. Yeah. It tells him enough for him to try to recreate it. Well, I'll tell you now, you see, that, that's interesting, maybe. Because that means that during this, the real deploy sequence, when we're really running that camera, you don't actually use the sound. Any comments that the crew members make spontaneously yeah. about what you see, and it doesn't matter whether the camera's running or yes. even if we sure. if we know what you what you felt. If you look at that and say, Wow, look at that, isn't that incredible? That's a really mm -hmm. useful piece of sound. Yeah. Would would you uh, again, you know, some people will be sometimes picking those scenes up uh -huh. from the mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. again, a mic up mm -hmm. front Mike, either in the middle and the after on this side, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. Well, w once again, it's it's a simple case of having the microphone nearest the most activity. Okay. We don't have we don't have microphones everywhere. Okay. Front and back is obviously as we we've just looked at is the most likely to get something of everything. Um, if there's no activity, no one operating anything up front, then uh, I would move the mics back into this area. And it may be an odd case where you want a mic downstairs and one upstairs. I'm not, not sure. My guess you know. is that yeah. activities that will require yeah. 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 The downstairs would definitely yeah. would put the whole setup down. Well, once again, down here in this part of the studio, <laughs> you'd have the. Uh, <coughs> This is made, made for sound, right? It is. Perspective. Yeah, it is. Space right. um, I, I sort of wanted to finish up by just making, sort of going over a list. We've always touched on many of them of things that you might want to record or, or things to consider anyways. Um, just to repeat myself, of course, we're interested in trying to record any time the camera is used, a camera event and trying to uh, record uh, time before and after that event. You know, and so I would sort of have the sound just roll minutes of, in advance of it and uh, let it go for a while afterwards. Um, uh, as a corollary to that, if something happened during the camera event that uh, um, you could, could reproduce later, that'd be great too, but that's something that's it would occupy your mind, you know, a key line of dialogue or something, somebody said something, but um, then secondly, the thing to, to be aware of is to gather interesting sound, which will be useful for this type of picture, especially the comments. We're very interested in your, in, in the crew's reactions to being here and things they see, since this film is focusing on a lot of things that are out the window, you know, things that we're seeing on Earth, that if there were times where there was conversation about that, maybe sitting at a meal while you were discussing what you saw in the previous few hours, you know,